Today we're gonna talk about my top requested meme, DNA transcription, translation, and protein synthesis. You probably already know what DNA is, or do you? Well, you know that it looks like a spiral leather thing, but probably not much else. Let's focus on just one strand, the other half is not important for now. These leather handle things are called nitrogenous bases, I'm gonna be referring to them as just bases from now on. Each of these bases can be one of just four different molecules, adenine, cytosine, guanine, and thymine, or A, C, G, and T. And this is true with every living thing on earth, from humans to spiders to trees to bacteria to Fortnite gamers, which is pretty epic. The whole point of DNA is that the specific sequence of bases in it is a code, similar to how the zeros and ones in your heart is code for images, videos, music, Minecraft mods, or whatever data you have stored. It works pretty much the same way, except that instead of being a binary system, either 0 or 1, there are 4 different bases in DNA, making it a quaternary system. But what does DNA actually code for? Proteins. Like DNA, proteins are long chain molecules, but their basic units this time are amino acids. In humans, there are 20 different amino acids, so every protein in your body is made up of a combination of just these 20 molecules. As with DNA, most living organisms all use these same 20 amino acids as well. So now it will get a bit more complicated, but bear with me. Each set of three consecutive DNA bases codes for a specific amino acid. In a binary system, a set of 8 bits is called a byte. With DNA, a set of three bases is called a codon. Since there are four different bases, one codon therefore can code for 4 to the power of 3, so 64 different states. However, there are only 20 amino acids, and then there are a couple of other codes to signify the end of a protein chain, so having 64 states is a bit of an overkill. Most amino acids have multiple codons that code for them in fact, which kind of seems like a waste, but DNA really do be like that sometimes. For example, a sequence of GGA codes for the amino acid glycine, CAA codes for glutamine, and TAG is a stop codon, it codes for the end of a protein. A sequence of DNA that codes for one single protein is called a gene. When a protein needs to be created, its gene is copied from the DNA onto a strand of RNA. RNA is almost like DNA, but ever so slightly different just to make things more complicated. This RNA strand leaves the nucleus of the cell and travels to what's called the ribosome. The ribosome is the powerhouse of the cell. Oh wait, wrong organelle. Ribosomes are actually mini factories where all your proteins are assembled. The ribosome produces a protein according to the blueprint that is coded in the RNA strand. It starts by looking at the RNA's first codon and finding an amino acid that matches with it. The ribosome then looks at the second codon and finds the correct amino acid for that and joins it to the first amino acid. This keeps going on and on until the whole protein is complete. The point of this system is that, similar to a computer system, proteins can have a wide variety of different functions, depending on what amino acids they consist of and how they are chained together. Different amino acids have different properties, for example some are acidic while others are basic, some are neutral while others have a positive or negative charge. This means that some amino acids are attracted to certain amino acids while repelling other ones. The final shape of a protein is decided by the interactions between all the different amino acids that it's made of, and the structure of a protein affects its function. For example, collagen, the most common structural protein that is found in your tissues and muscles, is just a simple helix like this, as it needs to have height and size strength. On the other hand, most enzymes just look like blobs. Apart from structural proteins and enzymes, other types of proteins include hormones, clotting proteins, transport proteins that carry nutrients in your blood, and channel proteins that transfer nutrients into and out of your cells. Insulin, the protein hormone responsible for maintaining stable blood sugar levels, is a relatively small protein. It contains just 51 amino acids, here it is in its entirety. Most proteins are way larger though. 
the longest human protein is Titan. No, not that Titan. It has over 34,000 amino acids. In fact, the longest English word is the chemical name of Titan, which is just a long sequence of these 34,000 amino acids. Apparently, it would take three and a half hours just to say it out loud. Should be an easy task for Mr. Beast, to be fair. So in conclusion, this is all DNA really is, a code for all the proteins you need. You probably also know that everyone's DNA is unique. This is because in some cases, not everyone will use the same exact protein for the same thing. For example, people with brown eyes will have one or more genes that control eye color that are different from those of blue-eyed people. With many other things that also vary between different people, it gets more complicated though. It's usually a combination of many different genes that is ultimately responsible for your height, for example. But other environmental factors will also have an effect on that. All of this is oversimplified. Biology is always much more complicated than it needs to be. But I hope it helped you understand the DNA meme a bit more. And as always, thanks for watching.